Hi, this is Mike with episode 48 of Getting Everyone Moving, brought to you by Palms to Pines Parasports. Today we have Jake Herbert, who uh, is a muscle guy. Hey, Jake. Hello, how are you? How are you? All right, let's get into it. How did you get into uh, powerlifting? Uh, man, that, that is a horn in population. I guess it had to do with um, I was trying to get my weight down for Wilhelm Ashmore. I played Wilhelm Ashmore before I ever been lifting anything. And I was overweight and I needed to lose weight. And I happened to join a private gym here in Indiana and a guy that was funny with me owner have 40 years of power in able body experience. And he was like, hey, I'm over here and what put you on the bench? What he went to do? I think my first ever heavy bench at that moment was not me and it was like 155. Okay. He's like, if you come in on me day when I'm here, I'll train you for free, we'll see where it goes. Three months later, before I knew it, I was heading out in Nevada for my first meet in AAU for uh, Able Body. And I did like 275, 25, 275. Yeah. Like Incredible. So, you, um, so you, just before the interview, you were telling me so, how much can you lift then? Um, my state went on in Able Body. On the, on the Federation US, USPA at 30, and I had that about two years ago. I've done in mental anywhere between 340 and 350. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. And so how old were you when you um, said, you know, I need to lose some weight and I need to get in better shape? I was... Around well, 19, 19 years old, I had, I just had my first education done that year. And, um, yeah, I was born with my spine disorder. I had no use of my leg at the time. And, um, my right leg was causing me problems and my back was hurting. And the doctor told me, like, hey, you're a little overweight for your age. And I said, yeah. all right. And I wanted to be fat on my hair, and I wanted to be a little stronger than my hair, and play against me people, and we'll come back. <gasps> That's terrific. And now, so you've started a nonprofit, right? Adaptive Power? Um, no. It, it, Right now, I am and it's not nonprofit. Okay. I am, I want here in Indiana, there's not really anybody here in Indiana that help people with injury, disability, to achieve their fitness goals. Not everyone is really comfortable working with somebody in a wheelchair. Yeah. And I understand that. And I am actually part of the OHI. Sports program here in Indiana with the AI Paralympic Sports Club. And I've been with them for 11 years. I think I started with them out of high school. And um, how I got to meet some incredible people in and out of that program. And so I started looking at not a need here for somebody with that in a wheelchair, but have the expertise and the understanding how to get people in wheelchair to get back moving, get into a, and not just sit at home or sit on the street anymore. And how do you, hey Jake, so, you know, I, th I think that's a really good point that you just made, but how do you motivate people um, you know, who may have had an accident, maybe people haven't participated. What do you say to people to get them to, you know, do lifting or play wheelchair basketball or do, you know, whatever sport they want to do? A lot of it, especially with injury, 
and and the hen when they I mean, when they eat, they get into their shells now. They feel like they can't do anything anymore. And I understand that. I come from a military family. I would never like that because military wise, they are not going to let me do that. And so I, I like to talk to them one on one, get to understand the mind and try to tell them that it's not over. Yeah, this is, yeah you might be in a wheelchair. You know, the, the big question is, are you incomplete or are you complete? If you're not, if you're incomplete, you can eventually maybe work, depending on how your injury is. Disability-wise, when I went to my wonderful spinal disability, <laughs> spinal disorder, and when disability, it's all about understanding the disability, and when, and then understanding how it will affect them in the long run. And then my job is to kind of delay that effect. Yeah, eventually it's going to happen, eventually. But you can delay it with fitness, strength training, different things, and mobility training. And I always explain that to myself. I'm actually, I have a, a somewhat rare spine disorder called corneal regression syndrome. I was actually born with no spine between below T12. I have no lumbar at all. It's one out of 25,000 people are born with it. And it, and so I always look at it like, if I can do it, you can do it. We, and I'm always here with you. I'm not going to leave you like, hey, you can do it. Bye. I'm here next to you and helping you. <sighs> oh, that's terrific. So you said you come from a military family. Um, yeah. Did they, so did people always push you and say, hey, Jake, maybe you use a wheelchair, but you know, you need to do. My, oh, that's a funny story. Oh, my dad, a retired Marine, um, 21 years. He was a general sergeant. He got out of the military when I was born. He said, this is my last, this is my last, I'm done. I'm leave, I'm, I'm done. Now, the one that really pushed me before he died was my mom. My mom died of cancer when I was young. When I was a child, yeah, but he was stubborn. He was stubborn as he and he. And one of the things that he used to make me do was actually use a walker in school. He threatened to tell the school if they don't make me use my walker at least up and down the hallway one time a day, that he would hold the school board. So until he passed, I had to walk with a walker in my school at the end. And it's like, I had no use of my leg, but he didn't help. And he always had that mentality. And then when I was in military, you know, I'm always, you know, my, my family never treated me as somebody in a wheelchair. They were always... You know, family reunion, I'm the one that had to go and watch the little kids at the playground. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, yeah. That's great. It, is there anything you feel that you can't do? Uh, we high them. <laughs> right, of course. <laughs> I mean, and that's just me. I'm, you know, I'm just yelling and not me. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't think there's anything I can't do. I mean, I'll find a way to do something if I have to do it. Yeah. And, and that's the that's the attitude, right, that you need yeah. to live. I mean, oh, yeah. so, yeah, good for you. Um, now, what, what do you hope to, uh, you're going to keep competing, obviously. I uh, am. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm actually, um. Right now, he, in 2016, I made 
the U.S. National Para, Para Powerlifting Team. And I've been with them for, for like four years. And then I took like two years off. I took about a couple of years off because I had to finish my schooling. But this year, I'm looking to re-qualify for the team so I can compete in the World Championship in the Himmel. Now, how, how does it work in Paralympics? So is it by weight class or? Uh, even in able body weight class, is, uh, okay. my weight class is the 59 kilo class. Okay. And in able body, in the able body, kilo, um, it, my weight class is, and then from there, it's just about how much you put up. They get three at him. He had one, two, and three, one left. They had to follow all of the technical rules. Not a lot. I, I, I don't know about a lot about, um, you know, power lifting, but are there a lot of um, Paralympic athletes in the U.S. who do power yeah. lifting? Um, not about, let's see. I don't count them. Because I, the last time I was on the team, no about between 12 and 14 Paralympic athletes on the team. Okay. And I know and I left, I think there are a few that had left the team and a few that rejoined the team. So uh, it's not, it's not, it's not like any sport. Talk about your training regimen. I mean, are you, do you lift every day and how many hours a day? My, I, do something every day. I'm, I might not lift weight every day. My big thing is, is um, especially when I'm doing that and lifting or fitness, maybe not your power lifting it, um, resistance man or your best or it be your best part. So I can take a resistance man, which is you know, a rubber band that's yeah. 20, and I can hook it in my wheelchair in different ways and use it as a whole gym. And I do stuff like that. Now I go to the actual gym and let's wait about twice a week for that. Okay. And what, so what's your diet like? I mean, what, what kinds of, yeah. Um, I try to what, I mean, I try to make sure I get enough protein, but basically I don't really have a diet program. My, Else. When I want to start losing weight, I try to cut out my snack, the little snack that I like, little things that, you know, the soda, you know, caffeine. Yeah, I don't drink a lot of coffee, so I drink a lot of soda. So I try to cut back on that and little things. I don't really go into a full diet carry thing like no. most people not a lot of people that do and I do understand it. You do have things like meal prep being and meal prep and really get really nitty gritty with it. But if you're active every day and you you kind of watch the little things, yeah. you don't really have to give up everything that you love. I can go and eat pizza. Chicken wings, cheese bars, they, I love them and I still eat them. But, you know, I might kind of wow them, I might have a diet coat here and there. You know, instead of having kids, I might have a fruit. Yeah. And, I, you know, I always try to have, I always try to have a vegetable or fruit with my meal. And then I always try to, if I am going to have something starchy, like fly, hip, something like that, I try not to eat them right away. I try to eat the main meal first, then yeah. leave, then leave them to the left. But given that you're, um, you know, a weightlifter, don't, don't you have to have, I mean, you have to have more calories than most people, right? I would think. You can. It, it all depends. I mean, it yeah. depends on your body type. Okay. Uh, that's what a lot of people don't understand. Body height-wise, 
we all are different on how we analyze our food. And Halloween, the number that we see on Halloween is the number heat it, when you look at a book, the other, that what it says in my book, it's the number of heat it takes for that planet to burn down into its making all stuff. And um, Halloween wise, I try to have anywhere between 20, you know, 2,000 and 2,500, maybe a little more okay. on the back end. But, like, and it all depends on your body height, your activity level. You know, if you're a guy that hit me high in the back from nine to five, I might cut your fat down and then, you know, put a little more carbohydrate in and it, it, it moves a little more throughout the day. Because a lot of people don't realize is you can cut your fat down and start up on protein, but your body can only take in so much protein before yeah. they take the protein and cut it and, and uh, make it into fat. So people actually do more harm when they like, oh, I'm going to cut fat out and then Roll up on protein and then it and then it yeah I mean, it's fat again. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, interesting. Um. So you started out in the adaptive sports field playing wheelchair basketball. Is that right? Um. I started trying everything. I I think my first adaptive clinic was um a water team. We had a water team clinic. And I still had one leg at the time. No, no, I didn't. I actually had both legs at the time. And it was fun. I, um, <laughs> it was fun. Um, but then I was like, you know what? I'm from Indiana, and that's more like a big thing yeah. here in Indiana. Yeah. And actually, what's funny is I actually, when I was younger as a kid, I played a form of adaptive baseball at a kid from a random league. I don't even know. I don't even remember who name was mine. Then I did a form of not power soccer, but adaptive soccer. And my dad put a um, collection plate, like you would hear a hockey ring, and made this thing that went on wheelchair. And you can hit the ball a while without the ball going in at the wheelchair. And then we, and then I play on a special mean basketball team. I was the only one in the wheelchair on the team. And then from there, I had to fill out sports. And then at the high school, I got went on high. And then that when I got in, in wheelchair basketball, and I follow a chair. I play like a heat, like a half a heat in with the junior team because I made the age limit by four days. The age limit cut off was like September 1st, and I was 18 at the time. Uh. And my birthday was September 4th. Uh, like I made it right down that little, I got to play like half a heat in with the junior. And then I play a bulk. For about six years, I played a long league for about six years, and we went to national twice and wow. ranked number two here in Indiana. Wow, that's incredible! Uh, um, how? What? Are you coaching any uh, younger people uh, or older? Right now, no. We are finishing my degree. And I wanted to make sure I had all of my degree in line yeah. before I start coaching somebody. Because I wanted to make sure I had the right financial, right training, like everything I had. And that the point of me starting my company was to actually start helping people, young or old, or my age, anybody at the point. What, what have you been studying? What are you getting your degree in? Uh, my degree is actually in exercise science. 
a little actually in fitness and lifting and moving the body. And that um, I believe in the Christian class is um, therapy class is um, psychology class is I'm actually just finished up a um, a it called transformation behavioral class where it helps me understand how to take on my mindset and start making it into a positive mindset. It was a very interesting class. So you, you're really in, in your business as it becomes fully operational. I mean, you're taking a really holistic approach to, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's, yeah. yeah, it sounds like you're going to have a very successful business. Good for you. That's really terrific. How, how do you think, um, how do we create more um, inclusion in society? I mean, what, what are some of the things that you do? What are some of the things that you see, you know, that, that we need to do as in a society to just include people? Oh, I, oh, the, the, the question, especially at the end, we all have it. Women, men, we all do this. Um, even in the in the end, it's fun because we all look at each other. We all yell at each other and speak like and then you get people in the end that will actually come at you and yell at you face to face. The fun thing is when I'm in the game, it's fun to watch people because you watch people don't be walking by and they'll have their phone out, take video. What will actually come up to me and like, hey, can I get a video of you or hey, can I get a photo of you? And that actually makes me feel good because it's like, wow. You're actually taking the time to actually come and talk to me instead of trying to be sneaky and trying to be this and that. You know, and inclusion why is, I mean, in the gym, I always tell people in the gym, we're all family. Everyone in that gym is all family. We're all there for the same goal. We're all there for the same purpose. You get men on fitness, for health, to look good, to be who we are. And how um, I understand, and well, I even have it, it we all have social anxieties. And it limits us to really want to be around people that we don't know. Especially in him, where we know in our mind, people are judging us. People are looking at us and judging us. But what they don't understand is, when we get in, in a situation, we can block them out. But then what's fun is you actually meet people in that gym, in that family area, because then they're gonna look out for you. And they're gonna always be like, hey man, you're you're great inspiration. Which I know some people think that it's that we look at like I'm not trying to get inspiration. Me, I'm glad I'm helping somebody motivate themselves to be in a higher form of themselves. And it's fun. Well, I mean, you know, sorry, you know, the, uh, the inspiration to me comes from, you're an elite athlete. You know, it, it doesn't matter, you know, that you're in a chair. You're, you can lift weight. Well, yeah, most, most people cannot lift, you know, <laughs> wouldn't even try. So that's, that's the thing for me, which I look at and say, okay, here's this guy, Jake. I mean, he's lifting 350 pounds. I mean, that's incredible. You know, it's, it's superhuman, right? Well, yeah, just unbelievable. So we're, we're coming to the end of our interview now. And what are some final words that you can leave our listening audience with? Final words. You know, I always help people, you know, and I, this is my quote, I was following a body builder and he was talking about body building and power lifting and strength training and fitness training. And he had always, he, he mentioned a quote and it was a, you can be a part or you can look a part. And what he meant by that is, he hate these guys that look strong, they look like they, not hot, they look like that. But they might not even be able to do 350. But they hate guys that 
they have a belly on them, they have a they look fat, but they can lift over 400 pounds. It, it all now, it, you know, it all about your work ethic and what you want. You can be a part and lift all the weight. And yeah, you'll have people like, man, he kind of fat, man, he kind of, eh. But he actually put up more weight than the guy that looked like he put up that weight, but him. And it, you know, my thing is, is I always tell me, always be adapted. Always be that. Now, my thing I say all the time, be adapted. It doesn't matter what you're doing, be adapted. Have that almost military, be adapted attitude. You know, no matter what you do, no matter what you do in life. Jake, thank you so much. This has been great. Appreciate it. And the goals.